Hello and welcome back to Panty of the Geeks. You join us for the latest in Gene Steeler action. Obviously, it's new out this week. It's Clomiverse. That's a lie, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> new out this week, the Achilles Rid Runner. So, yeah, I'll unbox this guy as well. I got one because I missed out on getting him last week. So, um, after reading the book, kind of need him to make the Nexos work properly. Uh, and get all the benefits of that. So we'll unbox him after we unbox the Achilles Ridge Runner. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so there is the back of the box. Well, I'm a sticker still on. <gasps> um, so it's official. Um, we've got uh, all the options. We've got the heavy stubber though. Spotter. Um, we've got. It looks cool. I'm opening it. We're going in. That's it. We're going in. Come on. There we go. There we go. The Achilles Ridge Runner. Can't talk now. <laughs> one base. There is one sprue. Wow. Um, with lots and lots of things on. There is a second sprue with many, many things on. So you can see the heavy uh, mining laser there and mortar. So these are some of the options that come in the, uh, the Achilles Red Racer. Thank you, Doug. And a golf space. Oh, let's get it together. Let's get all the mm. things together. That's cool. Okay. So we are starting. At number one and two. Part six. Not one. Which is the base part. <laughs> and then seven and eight are lights. And then 28 is two of them. I like uh, hook. things for hooks to go in so I can lift the chassis up or something, I think. You know, when you like see like a tank factory or something, mm -hmm. and then the, there's like hooks on it so you can lift the, the, the chassis off and everything. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Those things. Right, okay. Um, so there should be two of those, 28. So number six is actually, is it the top upside down? It is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It kind of looks like a tau sort of shape. Sort of like a devil fish, or like a mini devil fish or something. I don't know, it's just, it's just the curved nature of it. It's very unimperial. <laughs> no, everything imperial is just a bot. Looks cool though, I do like this. Um, right, so that's uh, part six. So let's get these parts off. Let's also get these, this is a suspension off, which is part 55 and 56. Then we can start putting those on. Hey guys, so we've got those bits off. Um, so the top part of the chassis, part six, is going first. Then we need to turn it upside down. Then we have part eight going here. So where we've got these slots here, there are two corresponding pegs. That's going to fit in there. It almost does without gluing it, but I will be gluing it. Uh, and then we have these two square holes there. The two hooks are going to go through from the bottom. So they're protruding through the top. So I just don't want to drop it. Yeah, it's going to go in there and then you can see that it's going to protrude through. Uh, so those need to be stuck in on this bit we've got these little um, shapes there which match the suspension so they're going to go in place so 55 is going to go on this side so it's like the pointing slightly out when they're lined up so that way and that way so we're going to stick those bits together and then we'll be back Okay, so there is the first section done, in, and then we've got the suspension on that. The next thing is part 13, which is going to go on top of the suspension. That's the bit that goes to the back by the look of it. And then we have these exhausts, they look like exhausts, two of them. We've got 14 and 15, oh, that's part 13 by the way, the, the uh, axle. Then we've got 16 and 20, those two bits just go together 
as shown, really. And then they're going to go on to the back underneath the to marry up with the uh, the part of the exhaust that's already under there. And then we're going to need parts 21 and 24 after that. So let me get these bits on. Parts 21 and 24, those just look like they stick together and they make the front axle, which is going to go in there. So I'll get them off, have a look. If there's any issues, I'll come back. Otherwise, I'll just stick those two bits together and get the front axle on as well. Okay, so there is the front axle on. No issues there. Uh, let's turn that around. Uh, so then we have this bit. Oh, let's we'll turn it back again. I'll teach you if you're not looking ahead. Uh, so this goes underneath the front axle, does it? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So this bit here, which we've just stuck on, that's going to go over the top of it, lines up like that. Easy peasy. Um, and then what? What's next? Um, you have 23 and 18. Uh, so these are more suspension parts, aren't they? And 27. Got like suspension. So we've got 22 and 18 which is suspension, we've got the front grille which is 39, the first side mm -hmm. which is 27, yeah like you say. Um, the front grille is going to go on there obviously, um, we have 23, so what we're going to, yeah, get ahead of myself here, we have to put the top and the bottom parts together because Instructions say so. Um, 23, 7 I'll start with 18, makes more sense. So, ooh, that's faffy, isn't it? It's a good thing I didn't stick out together. So, what I'm going to have to do is put that in there. So, there's a little square in a little circle, and that fits onto there somehow. I think it goes that way, so it goes sort of sideways, so that little bit is pointing out. So I glue them on first, because they're in a really weird position. I'm going to glue them on first, then glue the two sides together. That makes more sense. Um, then I'm going to put the grill on, and then we'll put the side on. The side should just, we hope, if I've got the right side, which is the right side as well. That should just fit into the... So a couple of bits that I might need to file there and to make it fit. Uh, no? Yes? No? Right, that's going to go on there once we've glued all this together. So after that, Claire's going to get those bits off. Th Claire's already got those bits off. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, and you want 12 as well, don't you? Yeah. Just the other side. I'm going to put this bit together and come back and do this bit, to be fair. This is a lot to do. Okay guys, so what I've done... Attach those two parts first, attach this bottom part, and then there's two little clips on this front bar where these actually attach on to. So all I did was push them into place with a little bit of glue on. Done. Let's go and do the rest now. So, grill goes on the front, it goes that way up, does it? No, it doesn't, it goes that way up, it makes more sense. It's going to go on there. Put a bit of glue on. Simple. So that's the front grill. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to affix this side. I need to, I do need to file this bit down there and this bit there. So I'll do that off camera. Then we have the other side. The other side. So again, I need to file that bit off. I should have done it before I got to this stage, really, to be honest. Just missed it. Um, so that's going to go on there, like so, and then we have um, this bit here and this bit here, which looks like it goes underneath here, is that right? So we have this large part, and then we have this bit, which we glue onto there, and that apparently goes there, is that right? So it looks like on the picture. So, that would come. so I mean that's optional really then, because there's plenty of detail underneath that. 
piece of armor. And this is going to cover some of it up. So if you want to leave some of the armor off, you could do, I suppose. But we'll put it on. And I'll be back once I'm up to finishing this stage. Okay, so this is where we're up to. We've got the underside on, top side on, sides on, all in place. Looking awesome. Still looks very tiny sort of shape to me. It's like a mini, it's still, it's just the shape of it kind of reminds me of a mini devilfish. I don't know why. Uh, so I've got part four, which is the part that's going to go on there. We've got part 45, which is going to go on there. We've got part 22, which is sort of the rear bit, which covers up these two parts. It's going to go on there, so we need to glue those bits on, and then we've got the wheels, <coughs> which are all the same, They're identical wheels, they're all parts 30 and 35, I think I've got them all, yep. sure you know, so these have got like, some of like teeth, uh, these got like a fitting like that, and then they're just going to go onto the end of the axles, plugs, so we'll put those on, and then we have part 65 which is a wee ladder and that is going to go underneath here there are two between the exhaust there are two little holes uh, so the top of the ladder is going to fit in there and that's part 65 so i'm going to go ahead and get to this stage and then we'll be back okay so we're back and uh, this is where we're up to definitely car shaped now there's a ladder on the back where I said it went, and now we have some roll bars by the looks of it. Um, so they fit into the socket there on the back, into the little hole there on the side. So, socket on the back, hole on the side, and the top part rests on the hole. Uh, same on the other side, and then this bit goes in the middle, pointing up. Um, on each oh, so it doesn't go rest on the hole. There is actually I thought there was a little thing it's pointing up. Looks like it's pointing up in the picture, it's actually pointing out. So when you attach that to that, it'll be pointing forward, so it'll be like that. Okay. So we're gonna attach those. We have a spade, which I presume will be optional, but it's going on. And that's gonna go on in that little bit there, so that's it is just spade as well, so you could put it on any model. There's no like grips on it or anything for going onto the car. The grip's actually on the car, which makes sense. Uh, so that this car's going to go on. And then we have two optional two bodies by the looks of it. Is that two bodies? No, it's just it's because it's got right. So it'll be part 50, 49, 51, 52. Uh, part 54 and part 53 okay and that makes the spotter which goes in there the optional part is this next bit so you can either have flares or the the radar dish I forget what it is now. um those two parts attach onto the same bit um see how they go on when we get to it and see if you could put possibly put a magnet in there not sure I will, because I'll probably go on with either the spotter or the radar dish from memory. Um, right, so we'll get these parts off. We also want part three and part two, which are the heavy stubbers, which go on the front. And we also want part ten, which is like a fuel canister. That's going to go there. Uh, these parts won't be glued in, because then I can swap them around. Alright guys, so we've got the, the bars on. A little bit of a warning, I was I was scraping the uh, excess stuff off from the sprue. And while I had that in my hand it snapped, so this bit is really brittle. It snapped at the corner, so it was a bit awkward to fit it back on. It took a little time to make sure it was lined up, but it was snapped there. Just, just as a warning, just be careful with that bit. And I probably, not even if there's anything you need to file off, I'd glue it onto the model, get it together and then file it off from there. The bit I wanted to have a look at was this bit, the yellow little uh, ball looking thing on the picture is actually a circular attachment which is slightly annoying, um, 
but you could potentially cut that off and insert a small magnet in the if you wanted to switch between the radar and the flares uh, I'm not too bothered about the flares so I'm just going to go ahead with the radar part uh, which is um, whoop, where have we got? that's the flare part the fl it's got this ball attachment so the flares will just go on and then the radar part has got this bit here Oops, it was flying off into the distance. I should put it on the right way around. Is that the right way around? Something doesn't look right here. Yeah. There we go. That way around. And now it's gone forever. Uh, I think it went in that box. I thought we were hoping it would do. Yeah. Um, but that goes on there, yeah. And then the radar goes on top of that. And then I can show you that when it's finished. I'm going to build the spotter as well. And we'll stick these parts on. So we'll be back, hopefully, and find that part with the completed box. Hey guys, so we're up to here with the car. Uh, we've got the guns on. We've got a little canister on there. We have retrieved the part that went flying across the room into our box, um, which is that bit there. Um, if you, I mean, you could cut the bit off, that circular bit. Maybe you'd be able to fit a small magnet in there then glue these two parts together then you'd have to put another magnet in it'd be very faffy the way they've done it the other option would be to pin it in place um, you've not got a lot to play with though underneath as far as thickness you probably have to pin that and pin that and then pin it into there to give you enough pin to do that if it was that important to you um, you know, obviously because you'd have to make it long enough, probably about that long, to get down into there, because that sits on the edge like that. Um, if you wanted just to have that, the, she goes in there, just for, just for reference. Um, so you, if you did pin it, you could put another pin underneath her to keep her in place to help. But I'm quite happy with those two options, to be fair. Speaking of options, I, I turned over the page to have a look at the next bit to see how the guns go on. So this is <clears throat> a bit annoying uh, as far as magnetising goes. <laughs> right, so we have three gun options on this bad boy. We've got a heavy heavy mining laser, we've got the missile launcher, we've got the mortar. Okay, so the mortar requires parts 40 and 41, which are these two parts here. Now these, let's turn you round. We'll, we'll sit in, slide in to those two end slidey bits, the slidey bits, technical term. Um, so if you build the mortar, which is parts 38, 37, and is that a separate part? The leg? No, no, it's part of that, 38 and 37. You would have these two parts holding the mortar in place going on there. But you need these two parts as well to fit onto this arm if you wanted to build either the heavy uh, laser cannon, heavy mining laser, or the um, missile launcher, sorry. Um, so, the bottom connection, that's the bottom connection, you can see it plugs in. It's not impossible to magnetise this in three parts, especially with small magnets. It is exceedingly difficult, um, to the point I wasn't probably going to use the mortar anyway in the game. I do like having all the options just in case I can try one out. But I'm probably going to be up, up close with this guy and the bikes, to be honest, rather than sitting back. Um, so I'm not going to build the mortar part, uh, which just leaves the other two. And the other two use this arm, which is part 42, and attach these two parts to the bottom and sit in there. So. You would have one secure piece right okay so the next important part is this fitting at the top so the missile launcher fits on with part 34 which is there uh, that's going to go on there so you can see there's no as soon as you start putting other bits on there there's no sort of security to that at all so it'd have to be glued or magnetized or we put a pin in there to push through into there Okay, so that would work, and that might be what I do. Uh, the laser, the heavy mining laser, which is the option I'm probably most going to use, to be fair. 
because I like the main lead, I think it's very characterful. Um, goes together like that. So again, once you've stuck this together, you've got uh, that bit going on there. And again, there's no real support, so it'd have to be fixed somehow. Uh, and again, you could put a pinhole in there, the same pin on there, and put that on. So at least you could pull out two options simply with a pin. Um, if you did want the mortar as well, uh, you could, well, I'm trying to think that the best way to do that would be probably magnets, unless you could man unless you could fabricate two more of these, if you had like the uh, the, the gel for sticking things in, but they're very thin and they're really fiddly. Um, so my advice was if you're desperate to have a mortar, put a mortar on and be, be done with the mortar, <laughs> really, or use a pin and do the other two. But it's not impossible, it's just you'd need mini, mini, mini magnets. What's the smallest magnet I've got? Hold of uh, that one. So the smallest magnet I've got is for the Zing Industries. And you see that it's two by one. Now, that might actually do it. See, I'm talking myself into it. But whether it's got, got enough strength to hold it afterwards would be the question, because you'd only be able to fit one magnet and two magnets. You've got, you have two magnets, so you're going to start off with that size for one side, and the same for the other. It would be possible to... Yeah, well, if you put a magnet actually in that bit, expanded that hole, put the magnet in, did the same with the... Uh, mortar itself, so that'd be, that's four magnets, and you cut these bits off. You could then drill a hole in there and actually fix the magnet in. You'd lose part of your detail maybe if you went too far. And you probably could. So, so, yeah, the plastic is just thick enough to do it. So, you could take that uh, square part out there. And then drill a hole in, you need, need to do exactly the same size as the magnet. You have to do that on both sides, and then you'll be able to magnetise by putting magnets in there and magnets in the um, mortar. It probably would hold it in place. You'd be fine switching from the mortar to that, and then you have separate magnets or pins to hold the top part in. You probably could do it. I'm thinking that, should I go to gosh? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could do it though. That's two by one millimetre magnets. I reckon they would just be the right size, just. But you'd have to, you'd have to be, you're talking tenths of a millimetre, because those are going to go in there exactly. You'd have to be fairly confident with your drilling skills that you didn't drill straight through the plastic. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna build I'm not gonna I'm not doing the magnetizing. I'm gonna chicken out a little bit. Cause we're talking like there's no give in there at all. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong and ruins the whole damn thing and I'll be annoyed with it forever. So instead of doing that and annoying myself, what I'll do, I'll probably put a pin in the top of this and give me the two weapon options there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back. Alright guys, so I've put said pin in there after about an hour trying to find my, <laughs> my, my pin down <laughs> there. Couldn't find the silly uh, drill. Right, so pin's gone in. We've drilled a hole in the bottom of the last can, which is now very dry. That's going to go on there. That's how it's going to sit in place. That should be fine once this bit's glued really on. There is the missile launcher. Quite happy with my my two options there, that'll do me nicely. Um, so those two are optional. So I'm going to glue this into this position there. Whoops, this position there. And then we're going to move on to making the, is he the gunner? He'll be the gunner, yes. So 63, 64, 60, 62 for all the parts to make him. 58 and 50, sorry, 61, make his arms. We also seem to have five times two. What's that about? Five. Oh, number five times two. So we've got two canisters. We have a hammer. 
and we have this little door handle type thing. That bit at least, I believe, goes on there where those two holes are. So that's going to go into the. Um, these are optional extras, the canisters. Uh, so look at the hammer. Yeah, there is a. On the other side from the spade, there is a point for the hammer. So that's going to go on. That's going to go on. Uh, where's the canisters meant to go? Above the hammer. Okay, I might stick one on just to make it look a bit less symmetrical. Cool. I might put them both on, who knows. Right, so I'll go ahead and I shall finish gluing this together and I shall also stick it onto its base. I think we're done then. And there is the finished Achilles Red Runner. Cool, Piggy. nice. Yeah, I really like this model, it's really nice. As I said, this is one of the models I saw and I was like, oh no, I better get some jeans steels. Because uh, <laughs> I saw this last week and I was like, oh no, it's going out. I could be tempted to get a couple more of these. And have like three of them. They're awesome. This is obviously with the we've got the spotter in. We've got the gunner there. And I've got a missile launcher on this one. I can switch these around to have the um, sensory auger. It's in the back of the rules. I'm reading from that. If you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got the heavy, heavy uh, mining laser. Um, so just, I mean, we didn't talk about this last week that much. It's got a 14 inch move, 6 plus weapon skill, 4 plus ballistic skill, 5 strength and toughness, 8 wounds, 3 attacks, 7 leadership and 4 up save. It's got a power rating of 4 on its own. I think it's about 50 points. I can't remember the points costs and not in here. I think it's 50. I can't remember. Got the heavy mining laser, which is a 36 inch range weapon. Heavy D3, strength 9, minus 3 AP and D6 damage. Uh, the mortar, slightly better than I was expecting, I probably should have read that. 40 inch range, heavy D6, strength 5, minus 1 AP and 1 damage. And it can target units that are not visible. So it's still a really good weapon. But again, it would be a weapon for me if these guys were sitting back and shooting. I wanted to make some sort of gun line and have mortars. We could use these guys as like cheap um, griffins. Are they griffins? The Imperial Guard ones? Yeah, I have yeah. no idea. P probably yeah, sounds so right. Let's so have the Lehman Rust tanks with the, with the Brood Brothers and then have these guys as like cheap versions of, of mortars firing over the top. Well, I don't think they're that cheap to be fair. But <laughs> I can't remember the cost of the Imperial equivalent. Look cheap looking because they're a car as supposed <laughs> to a tank. Alright. <laughs> Uh, civilian looking maybe, that's a little more cool. I've got two heavy stubbers, basic same range, heavy three, strength four, and one damage. We've got the missile launcher variant, which is on, which is chooses the frag or crack, as it's always been as far as I can remember in <laughs> Yeah. Apart from like flak and stuff like that. Uh, the two staples frag, 48 inches, heavy D6, strength 4 and 1. So it's like a light version of the mortar. And then the crack missile, 48 inch, heavy 1, strength 8, minus 2 AP and D6 damage, which is a light version of the mining laser, really. Uh, just with a bit of a longer range on it. So that's the all rounder weapon. That's the anti vehicle weapon. The mortar's kind of the anti infantry weapon. So you've got all three options to play with on this bad boy. Um, they said we've got the auger there, we've got the spotter in there, and the flares would it come with this standard, so this is going to have one of the two upgrades either way. Um, there we go. So it's a cult ambush abilities. It explodes if the model in this unit is reduced to zero wounds. Roll d6 before removing the model from the battlefield. On six, it explodes, and each unit within three inches suffers one mortal wound. The scout vehicle, so at the start of the first battle round before moving. It can move up to 9 inches. It can end its move within 9 inches of any of my models. If both players have units that can do this, the player who's taking the first turn goes first. It's got a flare launcher as standard, as I said. That's the little bit of thing we haven't put on. Um, kind of maybe regretting that a little bit. Should have read this. No, I'm quite happy with my choice actually. If a model equipped with this a flare launcher, roll a d6 each time it loses a wound. On a 6, that wound is not lost. In addition, once per battle at the start of your movement phase, you can select one friendly cult biking within 6 inches. That model, that unit then moves an additional 6 inches if it advances in the phase. I am regretting my decision. <laughs> <laughs> 
The survey auger units do not receive the benefit of cover for their saving throws for attacks made by the survey auger. Actually, that's good as well. Um, and a spotter increases the range of characteristics of weapons by six. All right. So if the spotter, you take, I mean, most battlefields I've played on, maximum size I've played on is actually about 40 inches wide. So if you're taking the heavy mining laser, the spotter's cool because you increase the range. If you're taking the mortar or the missile launcher, the survey auger is pretty good. And if you're taking any of those and you just want this to be a bit of a support vehicle, to your bikers, that, that ability called biker ability helps. All the fly launcher does allow you to get basically a six up save. You roll d6 each time it loses a wound. You know, six that wound is not lost. That flare launch is actually pretty damn good. I've got to be honest. Oh well. <laughs> I can see someone getting another one of these soon. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> I wonder if I can fabricate a version of that, to be fair. Using some of that gel. And then stick the flare launcher on. Oh, I think. To be honest, pro if you do that though, you lose the offensive minus cover ability, to be honest. That's that's what I read and that's what I wanted. I did read the bike about it and thought, oh, it's once per game, and I missed out the bit where it's... <laughs> you know when you read something really quickly? Yeah. When I read it last week, I thought, oh, that just helps bikers. I missed the bit where it gives you a bloody save. Oh, <laughs> should have read it again. My own fault, no one's blaming me. Right, so... That's one, and we'll move on to the bus pack that I missed out last week. So the reason I got this is because it w works with the Nexos, just like the Primus does. So those three models together are giving you command point bonuses. Or oh, um, if whether well, if you do something, if the opponent does something, you get the command point. Um, I think I explained that one last week. If I didn't put it in the comments, I'll do. I might do a tactics video on these pieces. I do like them. Got to admit, I'm, I've, I've gone very alien esque in my my forty <laughs> k. I like the orcs and the genie stealers and the dark elder. I've sort of fallen out a bit with Imperium, to be honest. They're not <laughs> called dark elder anymore, are they? They're the dragon, blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. Drushy. Trishushi. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Those guys. Those dudes. Eldari. But. <laughs> okay. So this is Calamity Max. He comes with two different heads. Oh no. Oh no. That's going to be some choices there. So there is the sprue. Legs, body. Um, these are all single choices. Got his staff there with his Vox unit on Vox Hill or whatever it is. And we've got two different heads, one with him looking mean, like he does on the um on the packaging. Picture. And one where you can't see his face, he's got like the the Nazi doctor's glasses on. Which is what they always remind me of those. Like, yeah, the little goggles. Yeah, little goggles and then like a face mask. I don't know which one. That's more sinister. But then he, he's kind of shouting and proclaiming the Call to the four armed emperor. So kind of maybe go for that one. I think the other one, the one that's on the on the actual imagery. Yeah. No, I like I like the guy shouting. I like the guy shouting. Got to be honest. Yeah, the shouting guy. He seems more fanatical shouting. <laughs> it's kind of what I want. Right. So three and one are the body and the legs. Part two is the front of the body. So we'll get those bits off. Then on part five, which is the back part. Part four, which is the gun holster. Part eight is his arm. I thought it was, I thought it was like a piece of base scenery then because it was down there, but it's his arm. So we'll get those bits off and we'll stick them together. Okay, so we've got the legs, part one. Part three being in the back. Uh, it's going to glue on that, and then we're going to quickly come around and put part two on. Oh, part that's wrong, isn't it? Yeah, that's part three. That's why it's not going on. I wonder what was wrong though. I just put them the wrong way around. 
that goes on there, that goes on the front. So we'll attach those bits together. <clears throat> what do you think of the Genius of the Cult? Huh? I think they're quite an interesting little army, to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, quite characterful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm still holding out for my sisters, though. Well, I know you are, yeah. <laughs> How do you? Because th- obviously you quite like Tyranid. I do like Tyranid, yeah, and the, they're a bit more human s kind of thing, and they're kind of like they're just something different, aren't they? The gene stealers. Yeah, you yeah. can see them like you know some of the, see the heads. influence, yeah, especially the, from like the, the gene yeah, stealers themselves, especially with the ridges and stuff. I I really, I mean, I missed out on them. I didn't buy them like the old hybrid models, and then every time I saw the really old hybrid models, the, the metal ones, I really was like, "Oh, I wish I had some of those." So as soon as they released these, yeah. Old, to be fair, when they re- when they released them at the beginning, it was like they didn't really know what to do with them. It was like mm. they put them in a box set, but it, yeah, it yeah, was yeah, they did, kind, didn't kind they? of like a. They must have. They must have been planning in advance. So yeah, but it it, go on the it took ages for them to do anything. Yeah, it did. Maybe they were just gauging reactions. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But you would assume by then they'd have been all the way through the design process. Yeah. It just took ages to come out afterwards. Like and that there wasn't much variation. I don't know. No, I'm glad they've got this second iteration of them. Yeah. With the buggies and we've got more troop types and more characters. And they've got the aberrants in a bit more. Yeah, we will get them. We've not got them today. Um, I've been sort of weighing it up. I am going to get them. Um, because they are cool, but what I probably want maybe I'll have to go and look at the rules and see how quick they are. They got the cool ambush rules, I think. So mm. I'm thinking what I'm thinking is like, do they need a transport at all to help them out? Mm. Where are we? There we are. Wow. So this. This bit fits into the backpack and it fits into his arm. So he's got to line it up. I wonder why that wasn't going on then. There we go. We're in. It's kind of like a... It's attached to his backpack. It's kind of like having like a keyboard thing coming around. <laughs> so he can type on it while he's... <laughs> That's pretty cool. Right, so I need part... Um, nine, which is part of this, which is like a cable. Um, we need part... We're on the six, six, seven, which is his other arm, and the top part of the staff that the loud hail apart. So let's get this bit on first. So this attaches underneath the bit we've just been putting on, and puts a cable that goes also goes into the backpack. I don't know if you see that there underneath there. There's a cable. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking. I I didn't get the orc stuff when it came out. Obviously, you guys are not because you didn't see any videos on it. But I'm still thinking of maybe getting the speed freaks army. I think it's because I kind of had my heart set on like orc pirates for some reason. I don't know Mm. why. (laughs) And while the vehicles are awesome for the for the orcs, um, especially that silver one, the Daka jet thing. That's cool. So six and seven being linked together. The Daka jet, yeah, that is just pretty awesome. Yeah. That was my favourite of all the new vehicles, by the way. Even though every single one of them was cool. No reason we didn't get Speed Freaks is we didn't think we'd play the Speed Freaks game. I've got tons of bikers already, so I was literally as much as I like the race car, the uh, the one that portal through space whatever it does much as I like that model I didn't think it was worthwhile just getting for the two vehicles because I've got, I've got tons of bikes I've, I wouldn't know what to do with remaining bikes rather than stick them together and have even more bikes <laughs> I don't know right okay so that is the arm on and again we've got an attachment to the backpack lastly is the head so I'm going shouty head I'm going shouty head shouty head Shouty head. Shouty head. Shouty head. head. I'll put your other head somewhere safe. Yep, and that just fits in there. And then we shall glue him into the base. 
I like the fact he's still on a book as well. It's like, yeah. like the Imperial Creed or something. He's, he's got his foot on it. You see it on the floor, he's gone, I'm going to stand on that. And there he is. Calamity Fred. Clamavius. Clam I don't know how you say that. Clamavus. Clamavus. Maybe? Is it a real word or is it a game which invented it? Clamavus. Yeah. Shouty guy. As I will call him. Right. So those are the two models for today for the Genius of the Cults. Then outstanding we've got the Aberrants, the Abominant and the Biophage. Got them right. Um, they kind of all go together for me. And when I was having a look through making an army list, um, they didn't actually feature in it. I need to go back. Because obviously I didn't read the rules for the sodding buggy ride, did I? No. So I need to go back and read the rules for the uh, the aberrants. Make sure I didn't miss anything too obvious. They are hard hitting. I do like that about them. Um, but I feel like I want to focus on like more the renegade uprising part of it. Which is, I've got nearly everything else, mm -hmm. so maybe I should get the aberrants. I think it's because I've got four from the uh, yeah. Death Watch box set, and I can't even use four now, so I'm, I'm feeling a little bit like, hmm. Okay. <laughs> I think that that's, that that just shows that they really didn't know where to go with them. Yeah, they should have put four in them. Yeah. <clears throat> Seems a bit odd. Yes. So there we go. Uh, this is cool. I want, probably going to get another two of these. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. In time. <laughs> In time. After the, we finish this video, we'll jump in the car and go and get in two time. more, probably. In, in, the, in the process of time unfolding. A second. Yeah. I also, <laughs> need, I also need to get some bases from my rock grinders because everything's now coming with bases. Right. So they can't need bases to go on. They didn't come with bases when I got them. So, that. so there we go. So... Thank you for watching this. Uh, please like and subscribe. Put in the comments what you want to see us do uh, and what you want to see from Genius to the Cults and whether you're excited about Genius to the Cults or whether you think they're just rubbish. It's entirely up to you. It's your opinions, guys. I'm not, not going to tell <laughs> no, you this is true. what your opinions should be. Um, uh, I'm not a politician. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, put in the comments what you like. Uh, what's coming up is the question. We've got some more, oh, oh yeah, I've got a TT Combat video to put up because um, we've built some more buildings that were missing parts. I had to send away, got the parts, so I put them together. I'll let you watch the video if you're interested. It, it, it was it was, it, it was an interesting build, shall we yeah, say. Yeah, I nearly threw it through the window. Uh, so. Yeah, that took a full night of filming. Yeah, and faffing. And faffing. Much yes. faffing and filming um, and... But, saying that... It looks good. It's not putting me off TT Combat. No. It's, after all the stuff I've put together, they've got one thing really wrong. Um, and we do have some more stuff anyway to put together. Yeah. And we've ordered some more stuff. All for Carnival. Carnival, yeah. But I'm not impressed by the buildings that after I've painted them. I hope you guys like them as well when you see them. But I'm not impressed that I'm like, I'm really excited now to, to get an entire board for Venice. Yeah. And get it done. And I'm I'm painting as I'm going, so I'm keeping on top of it. So we've got some more unboxings to do, a few more things to do. I've got um, some more Caravalli mm -hmm. miniatures to show you. So that'll be some videos we're doing very soon. And stay tuned for that, really. So please like and subscribe. Help us out loads. Tell your friends about us. And you guys take care. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye.